We're with Guy Avalon, metallurgical and mechanical engineer from Chicago uh, at the 13th annual NARSO. Uh, he's a NARSO member uh, who presented recently on fasteners uh, to some critical acclaim. So uh, Guy, I wanted to ask you, what's so critical about fasteners? What's so critical about fasteners is when they fail. You could have a 30 cent bolt, in the end, cost over $10 million when it fails. So which one can you afford? Mm -hmm. The 10 cent, 30 cent bolt, or the $10 million? And this is why be people become complacent about their usage. They've been around for so long. And we've gone from different grades of fasteners from the early 1900s to even 1950 and, and so forth. So fasteners on the outside all look alike because they're all made by the same machine. So it doesn't make any difference uh, how it's made. On the outside, it's what we put on the inside, different types of steel chemistries. And that's what gives us different strength levels, the uh, metallurgical processing. But that doesn't stop there. It's how we use them. Mm -hmm. So because these things are so simple, uh, any fastener made can and will fail if it's not properly installed. So we could have a bolt that's an inch and a half diameter, high strength fastener, fail in a matter of days if it's not properly installed. And many times we go by the book, use the right torque values and right procedures, and we still get failures because there are so many variables that have been involved with fasteners that it's almost impossible to take account everything. So how do you make those calculations? Well, that's one of the reasons why I teach these classes is to bring it to people's attentions what the variables are so they can standardize and kind of get everything back to normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically what it does happen, it involves a matching component system. You have to, whatever grade of bolt you have, you have to have the nut to match it. And also a flat washer that goes along with it. That and makes sense. Because many times we have flat washers, we take a connection apart and they look something like this where you see an indentation. Mm -hmm. Well, these are common wrought flat washes, something that you pick up out of the hardware store. But because you see this indentation here, that means you've relaxed the load of the bolt. The bolt and joint have relaxed. And it only takes a thousandth of an inch of bolt relaxation to lose 30,000 pounds per square inch of clamp load. And that can mount up to one whole bolt grade worth of strength. Mm -hmm. So how critical is the fastener? Think what would happen if a bolt broke holding the engine on DC-10 on takeoff flight 191 out of Chicago mm -hmm. back in the late 70s. So fasteners are critical, but they're the least expensive part of the whole assembly. Yet we take into consideration, well, I got a 10 cent nut or a 20 cent nut. Which one are you going to buy first? 10 cent nut. But the 20 cent nut may be matching the strength level of the bolt. I mean, the whole system is a chain any stronger than its weakest link applies to the complete fastener system. You have to have a matching grade of nut to that matching grade of bolt. Otherwise, the whole system is compromised. Nuts usually look alike, and these are all the same height, but they, we have three different grades of nuts right here. And they are identified by notches on the side, or in this case, no notches. This is a grade two nut. This is a grade five nut that has a single notch on each corner. And a grade eight nut has got two notches on each corner. Now you may have noticed the color of the nylon rings. This is to identify the manufacturers. Every manufacturer has got a registered color. And even regular nuts have got notches on them too, but we put them in the form of a radio marking. So this is a grade eight where we have two not two marks, circumferential marks that are 60 degrees apart. Every fastener, whether it's a nut, bolt, or flat washer is marked and it has a manufacturer's identification logo to it. So down here is the manufacturer of this nut. These colors are the manufacturers of this nut. Have you seen incidents where um, they, the procedure wasn't uh, followed and, and there was uh, something that occurred because of the fastener? Oh, definitely. It almost happens on a daily basis and it depends upon the applications. Uh, I'm not saying what industries, because it, it does happen across the board. And uh, you look into storage bins, you go into the, the maintenance shops, and uh, everything is marked. The heads of the fasteners are marked, so are the nuts. The nuts have different grade markings on them. 
and you could tell by the grade markings how strong the nuts are to match it. And I've gone into bolt bins and picked out nuts, and I could pick out three different grades of nuts in the same bin. People don't look at the markings. Mm -hmm. So they put like a grade two nut on a grade eight bolt, you got a grade two connection. And we don't really know. You have to look, identify, keep things clean too. Because even contractors come in and out, they have their own equipment, put things back. So you gotta have control over the systems as well. I guess it might be too um, cost prohibitive for the manufacturers to put it in one package so that they don't get that mixed up because it's a low cost thing anyway. There are some uh, distributors that uh, offer systems that will come in and, and actually do put everything away for you and, and do the accounting rather than having people do it themselves. But as long as people become aware of what it is that they're using, even down to the purchasing agent because if the engineer specifies or even the mechanic specifies he needs this for this application, purchasing agent uh, has to follow those. You know, he may think, okay, get a better price over here, but is it the same part? Will it function the same? Maybe not. So I guess the lesson is always look for that number. Correct. And if you're in doubt, pick up the phone and ask. It's the simplest way rather than having a mistake. So it, have you seen when amusement devices, they're, they're mobile, so they move quite a lot, so you will be using fasteners quite a bit. Uh, have there been uh, any incidents that you're aware of in, in the amusement device industry? Well, sometimes, of course, you do hear about accidents, and um, I haven't been privy to a lot of the causations of them. But one thing is, is that standard nuts, when used, can only be used once. When you take them off and tighten them up again, it will actually produce less clamping force than before because of the friction, the internal friction between the threads. Even if you use a torque wrench, mm -hmm. torque it up exactly. You do it by the book. A torque wrench only sees 100%. It doesn't know or care how the friction is divided. And basically 90% of your total output friction is taken up for that friction as the nut contacts the surface and then as the threads wrap themselves apart. So that only leaves you with 10% of your energy to stretch the bolt. Mm -hmm. So you eat into any of that 10% and you don't get the clamp load. So if you are mobile, you, you have to know that you can only use a fastener once. In some applications, critical applications, I would say, where it can cause personal injury, property damage, or a loss of life, I'd be very, very uh, skeptical about reusing something. Mm -hmm. If it's in a shear application where parts want to slide, it's not maybe as critical every time, but if it's in a dynamically loaded situation where you get a lot of vibration, shock, or impact, mm -hmm. then we can have what we call metal fatigue. One second is there, next second is gone. There's no way to detect for that. Yeah. There's no visual fracture that you can see starting, but it's there. It's only microscopic. And it's a low-cost solution anyway, of just to be yeah, on the safe side. Very. Cost to your insurance less. So. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Guy. I hope uh, the rest of the NARSO event is uh, as informative and enjoyable as those in the past. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it.